Hi, we'll discuss about the Nyquist plot in detail. So the prerequisite of the Nyquist plot is the polar plot. So before starting the Nyquist plot, we'll talk about the uh, mapping theorem. So this mapping theorem states that every point of S plane will get mapped down to a corresponding point in G of S, H of S plane where g of s h of s is a function is any function of s that means for example if you are drawing some sort of a uh, point on the s plane definitely there will be certain point on the g of s h of s plane so the combination of all points in the s plane is called the nyquist contour and the plot of this nyquist contour onto the g of s h of s plane is called the nyquist plot so let us take an example uh, the the let's just take from the example of 0 minus 5j and we want it to map onto the s plane so 0 is there and i am representing as 0 is at the origin and minus 5j it is on the negative real image negative imaginary axis i wanted to map onto a g of s h of s plane where the plane is represented as s plus 2 where here s is equal to 0 minus 5j so when i substitute 0 minus 5j i'll get uh, i'll get the real and imaginary part as 2 minus 5j so we have to identify the 2 and you have to identify the minus 5j and this origin is mapped to the 2 on the real axis and the 5j is mapped to the minus 5j on the imaginary axis this is called mapping so now let us recap little about our polar plot so that uh, we will uh, ensure that all you are uh, understanding correctly so let us talk about the polar plot and i wanted to draw the polar plot on my uh, s plane where i wanted to change the value of j from 0 to omega and the same thing i wanted to map into the g of s h of s plane where g of s h of s is equal to 1 by s plus 1 where here s is equal to j omega so when i am drawing the polar plot i have to find out both the magnitude and the angle right so substituting the value of s is equal to j omega i can find out the value of magnitude as well as the angle that is 1 by square root of 1 plus j omega 1 plus omega square and tan inverse minus tan inverse of omega so by substituting the value of omega that is starting from 0 to infinity when omega is equal to 0 1 by 0 1 by 0 plus 1 it is 1 so magnitude is 1 whereas tan inverse of 0 is 0 at omega is equal to infinity magnitude is 1 by infinity is 0 and phi is minus 90 so it is minus so first of all we have to keep all the coordinate angles 0 minus 90 minus 1 is to 70 so first of all you have to find out where omega is equal to 0 and how it is transferring and whenever omega is equal to 0 and magnitude is equal to 1 at omega is equal to infinity magnitude is equal to infinity. so this is how you can simply see when omega is j is 0 and how it is transferring from the polar plot i mean from the s plane to the g of s h of s this is called mapping so the left side is called contour the right side is called the polar plot that we are representing now let us take the simple example like the principle of argument this principle of argument states that say for example uh, if there are poles and zeros that are enclosed i mean encircled inside a plane how are we going to represent is the principle of argument the principle of argument stated that the s plane is closed contour encloses p poles and z zeros in the right hand side of the s plane then the origin of g of s h of plane is encircled p minus z time in the anti clockwise direction so here what i am taking is i am taking two zeros that is a and b that is encircled so now these two are encircled whenever there is a zero there is a moment of there is a moment of anti clockwise direction okay there is a moment there is a moment of the poles that is in sorry when there is a when there is a zeros there is a clockwise direction these are all these are all moving in a clockwise direction when there is a zeros when there is a pole then this this will go in a anti clockwise direction you have to be a little careful here okay so when example let us take two here in the example two when there are poles when there are poles poles always move in anti clockwise direction zeros will always move in clockwise direction so now i am taking two poles that are uncircled and when i'm trying to map onto g of s h of 10 so these two poles are moving in 
anti clockwise direction okay these are moving in anti clockwise direction that has my 1 by s minus a1 so this anti clockwise movement you have to be answer and you have to be answer and circled that means this n uh, encircled two times the origin so this is how we will represent okay now let us take an example uh, of having both the poles and the zeros okay let us take another case where there are two poles and one zeros in the s plane when these are two poles and one zeros then the poles are more than the zeros obviously the system will move in the anti clockwise direction <clears throat> okay so you can simply say that whenever the number of times of anti clockwise system the system is said to be the system is said to be in unstable state so when there are poles this is moving anti clockwise direction when there are zeros it will be moving clockwise direction so the same thing will uh, make with the nfr with the help of an example in the case 3 where the system is having two zeros and one poles you observe carefully two zeros and one poles zeros are oh, sorry two poles and one zeros two poles are there so when two poles more poles are there obviously this will move the resultant of that will move in a anti clockwise direction so i wanted to map this to one uh, in the plane so p of g of s h of s is equal to 1 by s minus a into s minus b so and uh, c is on the uh, zero so 1 s minus c so when i am putting that so obviously the zero the poles are more so and hence this will be moving you know anti clockwise direction so the number of uh, times it will uh, encircle the origin is only once so it will encircle the origin only once so this is how we will draw the contour okay now we'll see the number of encirclements is equal to p minus z where p is the number of poles in the right hand side of s plane and z is the number of zeros in the right hand side of the s plane so you can observe carefully both are there in the right hand side that means we are our intention is to find out how many poles and how many zeros that are there in the right hand side of the s plane so that we can tell that the system is how how the system is whether it is a stable system or unstable system the number of times it will encircle the origin if if there are zeros it will in it will go in clockwise if there are poles it will go in anti clockwise direction so based on having having said this based on this we will go for the nyquist stability criteria so in the nyquist stability criteria first of all let us consider the open loop transfer function that is only g of s h of s so it is having some number of zeros and some number of poles so that is what i am telling as k into s plus r minus z1 so there may be poles that there may be zeros that are there in the left hand side or right hand side so that's why i have taken plus r minus divided by s into s plus r minus p1 so the poles that may be there in the right hand side or left hand side okay now for this i will find out the characteristic equation that is 1 plus g of s h of s when i am finding the 1 plus g of s h of s you the, the interesting facts are coming out if you observe carefully the interesting facts the numerator of this characteristic equation indicates the closed loop poles of a closed loop transfer function the closed loop transfer function poles indicates the you know closed loop poles and the denominator of the characteristic equation indicates the open loop poles which is already there above we have seen the open loop poles is s into s plus r minus z1 so that means what is happening whenever they give you any character whenever they give open loop transfer function from there you can easily find out the system number of closed loop poles and the number of open loop poles so based on this only the nyquist has proposed the number of encirclements is equal to p minus z where here this is called p is equal to number of open loop poles in the right hand side of the s plane and z is equal to number of closed loop poles in the right hand side of the s plane okay that is that is most important z is here this is called nyquist criteria number 2 the earlier p minus z we have discussed is nyquist criteria 1 this is nyquist criteria 2 generally people don't discuss about the nyquist criteria 1 so i wanted to give you a complete emphasis on both criteria 1 and criteria 2 now in order to trace the nyquist path path you know we have to first of all consider the movement of the movement of the 
I mean, we have to completely consider the complete right hand side. That means we have to completely encircle the right hand side so that if there are any poles that are there, are zeros that are there, right, left and right hand side will continue. So now what I am doing, I am trying to draw a path that is starting from 0 to pi by 2 and plus pi by 2 to the minus pi by 2 having the radius is infinity and also I don't want to encircle the horizon because as I told you when I encircle the horizon means the number of the number of zeros are poles that are there in the right hand side so I want to just skip that horizon for time being and I wanted to draw it okay there are s1 s2 and s3 now if you want to map the s1 to map the s1 we have to draw the polar plot okay to map the s2 we have to it is a infinite semicircle so we have to the having radius infinity so that means uh, to map the s2 we have to keep s is equal to limit r tends to infinity r into e to power of j theta where theta is uh, mapping from pi by 2 minus pi by 2 to map the s3 you just inverse the s1 because inverse the polar plot okay to map the s4 again the radius is tending to 0 okay put r is e s is equal to limit r tends to 0 small r e to the power of j r into e to power of j theta so these are the and where theta is moving from minus pi by 2 to the plus pi by 2 these are the four important points we have to be understand while we draw the uh, Nyquist plot so let us take an example then then we'll see in, the, in this example, I am taking uh, g of s, h of s as, so this, this is most important, right? So I am taking only the poles, that is 1 by s into 1 plus s into 1 plus 2s. Okay, so now we have to draw the s1, s2, s3 and s4. As I told you, in order to plot the s1, first of all, we need to draw the polar plot. Okay, so to plot the s1, we need to draw the polar plot. So first let us, uh, the, you know, the plural plot can be drawn by keeping s is equal to j omega that you know. From the, that you have to find out the magnitude and you have to find out the phase and then you have to vary the frequency from 0 to infinity. Then you can easily do all those analysis. Now let us do that analysis step by step. Okay. So we'll, uh, let, let us do the analysis. This is most important while you are drawing the polar plots. Okay. Now, g of j omega, h of j omega is equal to 1 by j omega into 1 plus j omega into 1 plus 2 j omega. And the magnitude is equal to <coughs> 1 by omega into 1 plus omega square into 1 plus 2 omega square. Where in phi is equal to 1 by omega is there, that is minus 90, minus tan inverse of omega minus tan inverse of 2 omega. So now let us uh, substitute the value of omega as 0 and when we substitute value 1 by 0 is anything anything 0 is infinity minus 90 minus 0 minus 0 is because tan inverse of 0 is 0 that is the reason why it is minus 90. So in, when you substitute value of omega is infinity 1 by infinity is 0 uh, so tan inverse of 90 infinity is minus 90 so that will become minus 90 minus 90 minus 90 is minus 270. Now you have got the values of at 0 and it is equal to infinity and you uh, put all those uh, into our polar plot 0 minus 90 minus 180 minus 270 at omega is equal to 0 it is having minus 90 uh, minus 90 having magnitude is infinity at infinity it is having 0 at an angle of minus 270 so the this is called the polar plot for the s1 that we have drawn that is 0 at an angle of minus 270 now in order to draw <coughs> s2 so the to plot s2 what we told the radius is tending to infinity okay where s is equal to r into e to power of j theta so substitute the value of r into e to power of j theta 1 plus r into e to power of j theta 1 plus 2 into r into e to power of j theta so here you, you have to understand carefully the radius is very high and it is tending to infinity so you can consider that comparatively 1 the radius is high so i can directly take r into e to power of j theta i can discard 1 and 2 there so r into e to power of j theta into r into e to power of j theta into r into e theta so limit r tends to infinity r r r it is r cube e to power of j theta j theta j theta is r e to the power of j into 3 theta okay so that is how you can uh, substitute that 
so here you observe carefully when you trying to substitute r values tending to infinity this value is becoming zero so the num this is this is the most important information when the radius is tending to infinity how many number of encirclements that you can see that you can easily uh, uh, step out you can easily find out from this value here so as r is tending to infinity 1 by infinity it is tending to zero so that is most important so when when the theta is when the theta is varying from plus pi by 2 to the minus pi by 2 when theta is varying from plus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 this value is becoming this value is becoming zero now we have to plot the s3 as we already told the s3 is the inverse plot of inverse plot of the the polar plot that we have seen that is g of s h of s is equal to uh, minus s s here s is equal to minus j omega so we are just substituting j j omega to be minus j omega earlier we have written s is equal to j omega it is just a mirror image of that so whenever we are trying to plot the image we have to just keep the mirror image with respect to the real axis this is most important so this is most important this mirror image is with respect to the real axis so whenever you are trying to mirror image you have to mirror image with respect to the real axis then you will get the whenever you are keeping the value of s is equal to j omega the complex conjugate or the reflection or the mirror will be s is equal to minus j omega that much that simple it is so this is most important now when you are trying to draw about s4 s4 is where the radius is tending to zero that is limit r tends to zero so that r into e to power of j theta into 1 plus r into e to power of j theta into uh, 1 plus 2 into r into e to power of j theta now here you observe the r is much 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 less it is tending to zero so this is tending to zero so you can discard the value in the this so one is high and one is high so this will become 1 into 1 into 1 so r into e to power of j theta into 1 into 1 because that value is much much less so I am directly writing as 1 into 1 so this is limit r tends to 0 1 by r into e to power of j theta or you can uh, indirectly write as limit capital R tends to infinity okay understand capital R tends to infinity r into e to the power of my j I just took into numerator where capital R is equal to 1 by r so whenever it is tending to the radius is tending to infinity where the where the theta is lying from minus pi by 2 pi by 2 minus j theta means it is uh, going from again pi by 2 to mm, minus pi by 2 so this the radius is tending to again infinity though s4 is also the radius is tending towards the infinity so that means what is happening here the it is not at all and uh, it is not at all uh, going through that so now here the number of encirclement depends upon the type of the system if you see the type of the system is 1 the number of encirclement above the horizon is equal to 1 because you know already the type of the system if there is a 1 by s means it is type 1 1 by s square means it is type 2 1 by s cube means it is type 3 1 by s to power of moon means type 4 depending upon the poles pole location we can tell that is the types of the system now based on this information that we have let us draw the Nyquist plot okay in this Nyquist plot let us t see this so earlier that is coming here so that is uh, starting from minus 90 going to towards uh, uh, 270 and it is a mirror image with respect to the real axis and and close this path this path a drawing of s s2 and s3 this is called the Nyquist plot and if you consider see this is a complete once encirclement about the horizon so the number of poles are uh, on the right hand side that is equal to p minus z is equal to 1 here so there is one pole that is lying on the right hand side of the system then the system is said to be unstable system now let us take one more example so that will be much more clarity when the system is having both the zeros and poles so till now we have drawn uh, we have drawn the polar plot which is the system is having only zeros now we have to draw the polar plot for the system having pole both poles and zeros so while drawing the system there are three important steps the first step is draw the polar plot mirror image the polar plot the infinite number of semicircles is equal to the type of the system if the type of system is one it will be once if the type of system is two it will be twice if the type of system is three it will be three times so based on these three information 
first one and second one are most easiest the third one is only the depending upon the type of the system you have to identify then only you will draw this so let us take the example as g of s h of s is 1 plus 20 s divided by s into 1 plus s into 1 plus 10 s so now let us take the substituting the first of all as we told first of all you have to draw the polar plot the polar plot you can draw by keeping the taking the magnitude and the phase into consideration by keeping s is equal to j omega the magnitude is a 1 plus 20 j omega by j omega into 1 plus j omega into 1 plus 10 j omega phase is 1 by s is so minus 90 minus 10 words of 1 j omega minus 10 words of 10 omega plus 10 words of 20 omega because it is in the numerator now let us keep the value of uh, and let us find out the magnitude it is x plus i by root of x square plus y square so first like that likewise we can find out the magnitude directly and the phase we already find out that is minus 90 minus 10 inverse of omega minus 10 inverse of 10 omega plus 10 inverse of 20 omega okay so now what is happening here let us keep the value at omega is equal to 0 okay at omega is equal to 0 so 1 plus 0 divided by 0 so anything by 0 is infinity this magnitude at 0 will become infinity that we have to write and minus 90 minus 10 words of 0 so our 10 words of 0 will become 0 so at omega is equal to 0 that is again equal to 0 but important point is that there is a 0 here whenever there is a 0 it is according to our polar plot we are already told that it should cut the negative real axis that means the phase should be equal to minus 1 degrees so minus 180 degrees is minus 90 minus 10 inverse of omega minus 10 inverse of 2 omega plus 10 inverse of 20 omega. So minus 180 minus 90 will become minus 90. So minus 90 minus 90 plus 10 inverse of 20 omega is equal to 10 inverse of omega plus 10 inverse of 10 omega. It is in the form of 10 inverse of A into 10 inverse of B plus. So there will be A plus B by 1 minus AB. So the 10 inverse of formula. Okay. That is simple as that. So now I am doing the same thing here. So that 90 I am taking it to here. So by substituting the value of 10 words of 20 omega is equal to 10 words of omega plus 10 words of 10 omega. So there is always there is already already there is a 90 D that 90 we have to add here. You should not forget about that. Okay. That 90 is there. You, have, you should not forget about that 90. So 20 omega is equal to 20 omega is equal to omega. So a plus b that is 90 plus 10 words of 90 plus tan inverse of 20 omega is equal to tan inverse of omega plus 1, 10 omega that is 11 omega by 1 minus 10 omega square now consider the take on both sides the tan of 90 plus theta cot theta cot of 90 cut of uh, 20 omega is minus 1 by 20 omega so by substituting the value 11 omega by 1 minus 10 omega square is equal to minus minus 1 by 20 omega we will find out that omega value is always in the imaginary axis so it is not cutting at all anything on the real axis so we are happy no there is no issues okay so we can draw the plot easily so this is one one type of special case okay here <coughs> it is always imaginary that one we have concluded so now substituting the value of omega here when omega is equal to 0 so the magnitude is infinity and the phase is minus 90 okay phase is minus 90 and omega is equal to infinity so the magnitude is equal to 0 and the phase is phase is minus 180 so this is minus 90 so at omega it is infinity minus 90 and uh, at uh, infinity 0 and minus 180 so that is how we can get all those values now let us draw the simple plot so that is most important here it is not at all cutting any negative real axis so it has to discard then and there itself okay it is not cutting any real negative real axis so let, let us draw the plot here this plot Nyquist plot you can draw here so here in Nyquist plot you can see that so when it is at uh, infinity it is touching infinity and it is going to uh, minus 90 so the mirror image uh, is infinity uh, minus 90 0 minus 180 mirror image of that and close that so here the type of the system is also one so we will simply say that the uh, it is encircled by only once.